Hey folks, it's Len Kale with Hunting Western Mass. How are you? It's January. We made it through the hunting season. It's January and I'd like to do a video with you guys because it's never too early to start thinking about next season. So I wrote this little video up. It's called Taking Advantage of Early Bow Season Acorns, otherwise known as Hanging with the Nuts doing right now okay so it's january and i wanted to share with you what we've seen in the woods um, and tell you um, how i'm going to use that information to develop some specific hunting strategies um <clears throat> so january has ended and if you're like me if you've done any scouting or you were out in the woods um, last fall last year you would see that the woods was absolutely full of food beech nuts hickory nuts there was chestnuts, grapes, apples were loaded. It seemed like anything that could cast a shadow that could potentially produce a food source did so and with a plum. But today, however, I'm going to be focusing on the old standby that uh, literally litters the forest floors. They are abundant throughout the woods and the deer are always all over them. I'm speaking of the infamous acorn um, that being said I, I just do want to make a little side note here something that i ran into this year beech nuts and chestnuts when they fall um <clears throat> i had some cameras up we found these nuts the deer were right on them and it, i couldn't understand why i didn't recognize them before why i haven't seen them until i put the cameras up on them when i put the cameras up on them i realized that when chestnuts and beech nuts fall deer are right there they are right there waiting, and as soon as they fall, they hang out there until those nuts are completely wiped out, and then they move on. I had a camera up, um, <clears throat> and, and it showed us that the deer had stayed there for like three days waiting for uh, all the chestnuts to fall and beech nuts. And when they did, they wiped them out and moved on. So anyway, but we're talking about acorns. So um, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, red oaks were crazy last year, but the old timers say, and probably wisely so, the white oaks are, you know, deer will step over the red oak to get to the white oak um, because the white oak acorns have far less tannic acid in them. That being said, they'll step right over the white oaks to get to the chestnuts, but we're talking about oaks right now. So, uh, so when you're scouting or hunting, um, I use uh, uh, a diary, kind of, this is my diary, it looks like this, and um, if you look at it, I usually make, uh, I make notes in it, I'll draw like diagrams, like here's one of my diagrams, see here's a diagram of, a, of an area, and so uh, when I'm scouting, whether I'm scouting or I'm hunting, even if I'm scouting, I'm always, I mean, even if I'm hunting, I'm always scouting. So anytime I spend in the woods, I'm constantly scouting. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, <clears throat> I, I mark down where I find these acorn flats. And uh, the three strategies that I'm going to, I have three strategies that I want to talk about regarding the acorn flat. And um, these are them. The first one is uh, locating and identifying an acorn flat you um it's pretty easy to do there's a bunch of acorns laying on the ground there's big oak trees uh you're in an acorn flat that's a food source for the deer so what i've done is i've done a simple diagram here um <clears throat> this is a simple diagram of a road with an acorn flat um north is that direction uh these are deer runs that go into the acorn flat. Basically, I'm just going you know, for all intents and purposes. This is track that goes up and down the mountain, across the mountain, or vice versa, up and down the mountain, across the mountain. <clears throat> so, uh, the three strategies that I'm going to talk about are number one. Uh, the the first one is simple. It's find the acorn flat set up right in the middle of it um this is this is kind of a easy way to do it um and plus you can take advantage of the wind 
<clears throat> taking advantage of the wind is, is super important. I never decide what I'm going to do uh, until I get in the woods and see exactly what the wind is going to do. Um, so let me cover the wind real quick. You have to pay attention to w the wind. <clears throat> um, you'll almost always find trails downwind of a food source. Um, each area pretty much has a dominant wind direction. We live in New England. Predominantly, our wind blows out of the north in the fall and the winter. Um, what screwed up this year was we had a lot of warm weather and we had a lot of south wind. So a lot of people that had you know stands and, and sites that are successful, they didn't work out. And they said, oh, man, this year, well, what happened? Well, that was one of the issues that led to um, some of the confusion this year was we had a lot of south wind instead of north wind. Um, so <clears throat> first strategy number one. Find the acorn flat, set up right in it. This, uh, you know, paying attention to the wind uh, is, is going to be important because it'll not only tell you where your safety zone is, but it will also maybe give you an indication of the direction that the deer are going to enter that acorn flat because they use the wind just like you do, just like you should. <laughs> uh, they use the wind a lot. You know, you should have the wind in your face and your shooting area should be in front of you. Um, if you're not doing that, then your, your chances are, are going to get slim. Um, but that being said, um, second strategy, second strategy is setting up on runs that lead into the acorn flat. So you found an acorn flat, you found a deer run that runs into it. Um, it's, I kind of like to have two different setups for two different kinds of wind directions. Uh, so I can approach and, and get in and cover it from different directions depending on the wind. I like to have at least two spots. So the second one, the second method is finding a deer run that goes in and out of it and set it up on it. The third one is, the uh, third strategy I want to talk about is following those runs that go from your acorn flat. Follow those runs to find better ambush locations. Um, and that's that's a great technique because especially if you can find out which when the deer are coming in they're going to be hungry they're going to be focused on food they're going to want to eat you know of course they're always have security going but if their focus is on food it's going to be one you know you're going to be just a little step ahead of them because they're not going to be thinking about um security so much as they're going to be thinking about food after they have a full belly they're going to be on full alert so um, get those ambush locations. And, uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about, uh, follow these runs that go from the acorn flat, follow them all the way out, find the bedding areas, find the staging areas. You might want to find their watering holes. Um, and if you go here and you look at this, okay, here's your acorn flat. So here's a run that goes in and I have right here number one set up right inside the acorn flat number two set up on the edge where the trails are going into the acorn flat right number two set up in the trail that goes into the acorn flat catch them going in or coming out there's another trail you might want to set up up high depending on the wind also you follow this trail maybe you'll find a watering hole watering hole number three or a staging area staging area. If this is a brook, there could be a watering hole over here across the road. This might be a bedding area. So follow those trails and see where they go when they come out of the feeding area. And then I'll give you more information as well. Um, and so I think the last thing that I wanted to say was um, the, the feeding areas change constantly. You can't really go out and do scouting now that's going to be applicable in the fall. However, uh, um, if you know deer are feeding at your acorn flat um, and it's bow season and the acorns are dropping and you got a good setup and you're not seeing any deer, always give it the three day rule. You know, um, just because you don't see them for the first day or two, give them three days, let them cycle through. You know, if you see feeding active and you go there and then you don't see a deer for a day or two, don't lose heart. Go back to the third day. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a rule that a lot of people find success in. So um, I think that's going to wrap my video up. Uh, 
and I believe it is. So this is Len Kale with Hunting Western Mass, giving you a tip on how to hunt acorn flats. Wishing you guys luck. Get out there, scout, 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 and uh, we'll be doing more videos in the future. Peace.